Hello everyone, and welcome back to Outer Wilds. Look at the quantum moon! We can see the quantum moon in orbit above Timber Hearth. How cool is that? Welcome to episode 7 of Outer Wilds. Last time, we ended off the episode exploring more of uh, Ash Twins. We, the, the Hourglass Twins. We checked out the... Uh, we checked out the planet that we had not checked out for so long. Uh, and it was really interesting to see a, a planet or a, a system that's, uh, you know, an hourglass, uh, which is which is quite bizarre, considering the whole sort of thing about this game and time loops and it being a whole thing. But as you can see here, it hasn't actually started its... Uh, hasn't actually started its uh, its countdown yet, um, and I realized that I needed to put this back on again. I turn it off whenever I'm taking a screenshot. <laughs> turn it off whenever I'm taking a screenshot, and then I forgot to put it back on. Um, so we're going to check out the Ash Twin immediately at the beginning of this of this time loop, and I guess at some point we'll start seeing the the whole sand start draining from the planet and going into the other one, but something that I wanted to do was to check the core or the center of this one before the sand starts draining, if that is even, if that is even possible. So if we go in here... Oh, oh, sh oh, shit. Oh, cool, we can go right through it. Cool. And now the hourglass has has started draining. Okay. Looks like we're okay in terms of the center of this, but we can see it slowly start to fill. Now, with that in mind, uh, there was a chamber that we entered that naturally uh, filled up <laughs> with with sand and we were not able to, to check it out. Um... But there's a lot that we're able to kind of gleam, and we're going to try and do it early on. Now, we see all these crystals on the, on the ground, which means that's going to be a ghost matter cave. So we're going to have to find another way uh, around. I'm thinking of trying to enter the same way we did last time. Uh, I think this is an escape pod right here, and it's beaming out a distress signal. Um... Yep, there's a distress beacon. So actually, I'll land here because why not? I'm already here, and we'll and we'll check it out. So we're going to be doing more, more Ash Twin today. So here's our unidentified signal nearby. This is our escape pod number two. So let's head in, take a look. We need status reports for all systems, but initial things first. Is everyone unharmed? Our escape pod's passengers are afraid, but physically well, Anona. Everyone survived the crash. This is a relief, at least. You have my gratitude. Burr, were you able to find the other escape pod's distress signals? I can hear both signals somewhere in this star system, but I don't believe either escape pod crashed on the same planet as us. Yes. So we know that one is trapped in Dark Bramble, and another one made it to... Uh, one of our other lovely planets. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so this was the... Here we go. So this is the flight log. This is the, the Outer Wilds black box. Escape pod 2. Vessel has been mortally injured. Emergency sequence activated. Awaiting departure from vessel. Launching escape pod 3. Now launching 2. Collision imminent. Prepare for impact. And scanning external environment. Scan complete. External temperature is prohibitively high. Verdict inhospitable. Do not seek shelter on the planet's surface. Okay. Uh, and then we can proceed to go further. Oh, shit. Okay, cool. The heat from this star system's sun is more bearable below the surface. When our escape pod punctured this planet's surface, it broke into what scans show as a cave system with much cooler air. I would recommend we seek a site down there to build a long-term shelter, Anona, but these passages are a maze. 
Even with this danger, they are still our best chance for survival. We'll form teams and descend into caves and look for a shelter site. We can mark our findings on the walls to avoid becoming irreversibly lost. Be cautious, everyone. And be aware of the sand as you search. It appears to be rising gradually. Okay, so it's a good thing that we're here kind of as soon as possible because it's going to start slowly filling this chamber. So the escape pod punctured the surface, which is cool. We have found an enormous cavern at the end of this passage that appears promising. I believe we could construct long-term shelter there. The cavern M Mellori found is a wise choice for shelter. Could one of you mark directions for the others to follow? This is the start of the path to the shelter site. I've left directions to guide you there. Of note, we must hurry as the pathway there is filling with sand. Do not allow yourself to be buried by sand and make sure no one is lost. Okay, so shelter is that way. Of note, this passage leads to breathable air. Refill your supply tank there. You cannot tell how far deep these tunnels may wind, but do not linger as the area is exposed to the heat of this alien sun. Okay. Slowly filling in between the crevice. Emergency escape hatch. Oh, nice, and it's been activated, so the orb has, like, been spun around, and that shot off of there. So cool to see uh, the steps of those that traveled before you um, and experiencing this. And it's so great that we have a translator so we can at least navigate it, which is so nice. Keep moving, friends. There is nothing of interest at the end of this passage but rocks. And while these rocks are interesting, they can wait until a less urgent time. Okay. Do not follow this tunnel to its end. Coleus and I will examine the horror that lies at its terminus later, provided we live through this. Okay. Interesting. Horror down that way. Uh, shelter first, horror later. Okay. Let's go down here. So this is another, so just to pause, because obviously time is constantly moving and we can never escape from it. Um, Brittle Hollow is its own countdown uh, and Hourglass on itself is that it's collapsing within, uh, <laughs> collapsing the whole time. Um, and then we've got the Hourglass Twins, which is literally an hourglass, like one planet filling up, drowning everything below it uh, in this time loop. Um, we have all these sort of like planets that are just doomed in different ways. I don't think Giant's Deep is really a planet that's necessarily doomed. Like it's not like there's a massive tornado that destroys everything, but there's islands that get thrown out into orbit and come back down. Timber Hearth is in its infancy of being overtaken by a dark bramble seed to follow the same fate as the icy planet. Uh, that is now Dark Bramble. So that's another thing that's on its own slow, much slower countdown than these. Obviously, the Dark Bramble does not take effect, take effect through the course of a time loop, but it seems Brittle Hollow and the Hourglass Twins uh, do. Um, and if I could actually have my controller work, that'd be awesome. All right. Oh, shit. Okay. All right, we're starting to see the effects of the sand. Actually, where the fuck am I? Oh, Jesus. All right. Problem is, we're going deeper and deeper down while the sand is rising too. To the part, uh, the path to the shelter site is somewhat convoluted, so follow the instructions ahead closely. Very grateful for instructions. To reach the shelter site, walk forward until you meet the sand fall, then turn left continue to the room filled with rock column formations and climb upward through the opening above them. The sand here is rising. You must be cautious, but swift. Okay. We can actually go to the bottom here as well, which has got my curiosity just while we can still navigate it without it being filled with sand, but it looks like it's literally just a pit for the sand to go into. So... Walk forward that way or this way. <laughs> there is a fork in the road. I'm going to go here, then it's said to go left at the sand, so down here. Then it'll go into a rocky room and we ascend to the top. Rocky room, ascend to the top. Okay, gotcha. We're focusing on the, uh, on the destination, assuming that there is not much on the way. 
Otherwise, there would be instructions showing us so, I believe. Be cautious crossing the chasm ahead. The bridge Melari and I crafted will do its job, but it isn't strong. Once on the far side, look for the tunnel hidden behind the falling sand. Follow it, and you'll reach the shelter site. Okay, I'm so glad that when we're translating time freezes, that is one thing that I'm grateful for. The only one that we've kept it to time to continue on is when we're talking to people, and I feel that that's fine. So once on the far side, look for the tunnel hidden behind the falling sand. Okay. So we can just go right across there, and then behind the sand, there will be a tunnel. Okay. There is no bridge there. And there is our tunnel? Question mark? Yes. Yes, the secret tunnel behind a sand waterfall. Love it. Quantum cacti. You're doing well. There's only a little farther left to go now until you reach the shelter site. You can rest there. Hurry before the sand comes. Okay. Careful not to puncture your suit. Um. Shit, I missed it. I've missed my opportunity then. Oh, uh, fuck. And now I can't. I can't get out. I'm. Okay. I thought that we would just go down to the bottom. I can't get out. I'm gonna. I. Okay. Oh! You just walk through it. Oh fuck! All right, hang on. Okay, <laughs> I was okay. I didn't see that there was further to go. Okay, we'll go and check out that door. But there is more. God fucking damn it! I panicked there. I thought I was about to drown. This is amazing. Look inside the cave. How did this come to rest here? We haven't encountered others in these caves. I think this is a rare find. From what we can see, Coleus and I believe the specimen must be very old indeed. Imagine what we might learn if we could examine it. We both agree it's unlikely this dry planet is this horror's place of origin, especially considering what we observed during the vessel's evacuation. Is this an anglerfish? Clearly this hole is too small for it to have fit through. Hypothesis. There is another entrance to this cave. If there is, Coleus and I will find it. We can't leave valuable information undiscovered. An update. We need to find a way inside quickly, Mallory, because when I returned here to search for an entrance to the cave, there were children playing on the specimen. Oh, it's an anglerfish. Amazing. Um, three minutes oxygen remaining. Okay. Hopefully that you know, when we're in the... Um, oh! And it's dead. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. And there's dead... There's the my skeletons and something written down there. Oh, that's great. So this anglerfish unfortunately died in here. The concept of an of anglerfish in space, but like without water, is kind of um, really intriguing to me. All right, let's quickly get in here. So this will keep us safe from the sand. We got oxygen in here. Yes, we got trees. Oh, we got. This might be the Ash Twin project, or at least part of it, like they started it here. Shut the door! We do not want to get drowned in here. Anglerfish fossil overlook. Okay. Oh, it was already a fossil when they discovered it. Okay. Okay, this is exciting. Um... Wow, all right. We'll explore this level before we go down. So there was there was a lot on each vessel. Now we know that the Ash Twin Project is here. It's either on this planet or the other one, but it looks like they settled here. And then this group were doing Ash Twin. If I look away and look to it, are these quantum cacti? Do they also move so I can get in the buildings? Because we've experienced some of the cacti that have moved. Oh shit. All right, I need to go to those trees first. Actually, uh, yep. Uh, trees, trees, trees. Over here. Nice. Should we build the sun station to power the Ash Twin project? 
Are there other ways to generate this level of power? Theoretically, yes. Practically, no. Can't imagine discovering them in our lifetimes. I understand this proposal is unsettling, but the Sun Station must be built if we hope to complete the Ash Twin Project. Okay, so that is the thing orbiting the Sun right now, the Sun Station, naturally. I almost can't comprehend this is being suggested seriously. The purpose of the Sun Station goes against every standard we hold ourselves to and everything we believe in as a species. Okay, tension in the group with this one. If we fail, and the probability of this is not insignificant, we will without question destroy ourselves, all life here, and the rest of this star system. I wish to protect these species. The potential annihilation of an entire star system is too severe a cost. We shouldn't build the sun station, no matter how badly we want the knowledge that comes with it. Fear of failure is a poor reason not to try. I believe, if we're cautious, the sun station will work. I believe in Pi. I'm deeply honored. Poke, I'm deeply honored. Idea? Idea? I comprehend your position. However, if we aren't all but certain the Sun Station will not cause destruction once we've built it, then I won't support the station's use. We know it's been built, and what's really interesting about that is we know it's been built, and we know that the system is uh, essentially experiencing the supernova event safe to assume it's linked but there's so many things that we've discovered that could be possibly linked but we don't know yet so that's it's interesting could the sun station's existence be pulling the interloper into the sun i we don't know um has the sun station sped up the process of the sun going supernova and it's doing it like naturally on its own, the interloper isn't even, you know, really part of it, but maybe something is accelerating the process. Um, are we just at the end of the star system's life cycle? You know, are we just, are we just there? You know, have we naturally reached that end since the Namai first got here, studied all this stuff, and then uh, our people have grown from being little fish tadpoles to you know, exploring the star system. Like, do I have to go and navigate Dark Bramble and find the original vessel that's trapped in there that shot out the escape pods? Do I have to craft my, our, our own vessel and get all of our people together and leave the system and go somewhere else? But is there somewhere else to go to? We are literally witnessing all of the other systems, uh, galaxies, outside of our own systems, um, not galaxies, sorry, but systems also going supernova all at the same time. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. It's not limited to just our system. So it's, it's bigger than us. It's bigger than this, but who knows? We'll see. Unsurprisingly, I dare I disagree. We're pushing a possible new technology further than ever before. That, in my experience, is the defining characteristic of our species. Okay. Got some oxygen. Um, not sure what this does. Let's have a look. Anglerfish Overlook District. Stepping Stone District. High Energy Lab Trailhead. And the Eye Shrine District. Is this like a warping platform? Oh no, it just, it's power. Okay, I stepped away because I was wondering if this was gonna be, oh cool. Let there be fucking light. Okay, cool. I was wondering if you stood in the middle and did it, it would take you to the location. Fuck, we're not even safe. Okay, we are not even safe in in the safe room. It's slowly filling with sand in here as well. So we've already kind of missed our opportunity. We've already kind of missed our opportunity to go in here. Because the sand is filling up very quickly. All right. Which means on our way back, we're going to have to check out this bottom floor that we've just missed out on. Makes me very curious. Um, I was like opening that door. I was like, could that slow down the, the sand rising? All right, we started here. It feels like the sand starts rising faster at a, at a particular point as well. Like it just starts zooming. 
I'm just trying to see if there's anything for us to... There's definitely something in there. Um... There's a scroll thing, so we can definitely get in this room. We can definitely get in there. Um, just confused about this because we, like I said, we have encountered cacti that... Oh, hang on. We have encountered cacti that does disappear, but it looks like it's not here. Mm. There's a doorway, but it's behind this wall. Can see the doorway right there. Oh, and then I go in here, and then that's still locked off. Also, I'm expecting at any moment, obviously, for us to start having the <laughs> the supernova music to come in, and we'll have to come back here again, but it, obviously, it gets easier each and every time we come here. Because... We know what we're doing. We know how to get to this particular spot, so it will get easier. That's a that's going to be a bunch of ghost matter there. Yeah. Oh, actually... Kind of? There's some ghost matter there. No? Yes, okay. Ghost matter's inside. Shit. Oh, I'm gonna drown it. Oh, whoa. Right. Yep, all the ghost matter is inside. Right. I'm gonna need to do that when we're, again, not in danger of drowning underneath the sand. I guess, like I said, it really fucking fills up fast in here, doesn't it? Trying to see how much we can get away with before we drown to death in the sand. Okay, I uh, bought myself a little bit of time by going up here. Be welcome in this place. This shrine is a space to reflect on what brought us to the star system, the signal from the eye. We observed the eye signal in our travels and followed it here to find its source. What we know is this. Okay, I've read this before. I've read this before, but this is a, a new location that has kind of the same thing. If the eye called to us, why won't it reveal itself? Did something happen to it? Did the signal stop? Does it no longer desire to be found? Perhaps it isn't the eye's choice. All right, we've read very similar stuff already. So it's like a different sort of, I think what I'm gathering here is we're having different versions, not versions, but like different cultures, communities of the Namai coming to their own conclusions, doing their own writings here. And it's worded very similarly to people, to the Namai who might've crashed on the other planet, you know, and they're all doing their own thing. Um, I think so in terms of how at least the the writing is like this is this planet's eye shrine and there's obviously been another one that we've already discovered that you read about the same stuff with why they're here and all of that did the eye deliberately call out to us we could be seeing meaning where there is none does that mean the eye is any less important though perhaps the eye wanted to be found maybe it chose us does it desire something maybe it doesn't have to be us um and I think what we're reading here is we've read actual named Namai characters hypothesis on this stuff. Uh, and then we're reading, obviously, sort of a, a location that's sort of collecting all of these uh, questions um, all together type deal uh, in a sense. So we're like, while I am skimming through these, we've read them before in very similarly worded ways. Is the eye natural or artificial? Maybe someone built it? The eye is older than the universe itself, but how can it exist before its creator? 
could be naturally occurring, though this doesn't answer how the eye could be as old as it is. And I think probably, oh that's cool, probably another reason why you're able to discover it in this place as well as other places is it's very open-ended at where you can go and travel to first, you know? Oh shit, how do I get out of here? Okay, so that lift is there. Um, how do I... Ah, there we go. Okay, sand is, sand is coming up. So we've explored that shrine. Oh, it's not looking good. I might just have to go this way because it's the only place. Gravity cannon. Okay. Whee, open the door. Okay, this is the only place I can go because it's filling up. Obviously, we know that there's much more for us to do around here. Okay. That's blocked. Why would I be here? Okay, why would I be here anyway? Uh, my fuel levels are low. Oh shit, the surface. Nice. And there's the gravity cannon. Whoa, okay. So we can see that we got the red giant time. And now we can see so much more of that other planet. Where you can see that crazy. Okay, we still have a decent amount of time. The interloper is on its way to go in. Wow, okay, we can see so much. Uh, the gravity cannon... Oh, there's obviously a lot more to the gravity cannon, but it's been, um, <laughs> you know, drowned out. Um, so we will not be doing that. Chasm in between this is now completely filled up. That was a good that was a good loop. We got to explore a decent amount in down below, and we will continue to do so. Um, obviously, we just have to go through another loop. The worst part about the using oxygen as a propellant is uh, you can't really go up. It's not the greatest ever. I know that there's a fuel tank that we can get up here, so that's why. There we go. Nice. There's always a fuel tank here. Hello, Chert. How are you doing? Look over there. There's a whole fucking thing going on over there. So that's what that's what we're gonna do now. Jesus. Is the sun station still orbiting at, the, ah, at this point in time? Oh, Jesus, take the map right in there. Ah, ah the sun... Oh, the sun station. Okay. So the sun station orbits the sun early on, uh, but eventually it doesn't. So this... It could be the sun station um, falling into the sun accelerating or causing the supernova itself not the interloper because it's already going supernova it's already going red giant time and the sun station is no longer there so if we can fucking land on the sun station like maybe we could I don't know destroy the sun station uh, have it go away have it go away that's a, a I guess a current theory now is the sun station the mind debated building a sun station in order to power the ash twin project so it's currently I guess yeah solar powered powering the ash twin project we have to find this ash twin project and also figure out if we can get to the sun station um wild and there's there's so much yeah we are seeing things like linking up briefly like the northern glacier links to the whitehall station which links to the leg bone which goes to the thigh bone which goes to the funny bone 
And then there you see that there are things that are just like on their own right now. We are for, we are forming this with this web though. Okay. Let's have a look. Oh man, are we getting closer and closer to this sun as well? Oh shit, am I being pulled in? I am being pulled in. This is fucked. Alright, I'm we are dangerously close. Alright. I just wanna holy shit. I just wanted to check out this before we die. <laughs> um fuck. Alright, let's try and land on that. Not very well. But let's do that. Okay, it's probably not a good place to to land the ship, considering that the sand seems to. Oh, this is the Ash Twin Project. This is the fucking. This is that's that's when we've looked inside of it. The walls are are, are of a similar look to that. The Ash Twin Project is in there. And that's what we're seeing spinning around, which means inside of that room is still, and the the planet moving is is that. This is the Ash Twin Project right here. Uh, will there be an entrance somewhere? Yes, potentially in one of these towers. Is this a safe space to land? Fucking probably not. But we're gonna go check it out anyway. All right, this takes us up. Doing what we can before we die. And in time. Oh. Okay. Look at that. Okay. In times music has started. Um, this was not what I was expecting. Oh shit, and I've just walked off the edge. Okay. This music is, is beautiful when it comes in though, but it's like, it's, it's really interesting how uh, calming it is as well. Okay, so that goes up, not down. The race of discovering things while you're about to die. to die. Oh god, it just got very dark all of a sudden. Okay. <laughs> We're as close as we can get to the supernova. Where am I? Oh! <laughs> I'm on Giant's Deep. No shit. I'm going to Giant's Deep. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Welcome to Giant's Deep. Wow! We just escaped, holy shit. That's wild, we bought ourselves a few more seconds. And in one, like, millisecond, we were in two places at once. We arrived before we left, according to things that we've read and seen about departure time and arrival time and all of that. That was a, that was an interesting loop. I did not expect to walk into that platform and get teleported away, so that's kind of funny. Bought ourselves a few more seconds. Okay. Because there's also the thing that we have to consider that obviously the, the loop starts with shooting out a probe into space. So it's, it's definitely got to have something to do with the fucking probe cannon. There's also the sun station. Hmm. I just love the... Uh, Every other trip that you take when you get into the ship after a loop is like you're, you just get in so determined to be like, all right, we're getting in, we're leaving. But yeah, that sun station, absolutely. Um, that sun station, absolutely 
gets absorbed into the sun. So, something to think about. There's definitely quite a few aspects to this, this loop. I'm getting more of a handle on uh, velocity and, uh, and space flight and stuff as well. Lining up with, uh, with with the with the orbits instead of zooming past it or through it. Now, uh, oh, it just it begs the question of where the, where should we where first? As deep as deep into the planet as we can get. Um, so we're gonna go back in. I guess I should put my ship on some sort of safety net on the surface. Okay. I'm going to put you there. And then we're going we're going in. Was this where we were before? Yeah, this is the escape pod. Okay. Nice. All right. Going in. So the escape pod is our nice little entry point. There's more for us to discover, but we're doing this first. But I do like that it's definitely a game of, uh, you know, memory. Now, we're gonna go this way. So, horror... there's some horrors in here. Oh, never mind. Uh... <laughs> that's the other angle. The anglerfish. So that's... there's a viewing chamber up there. Be nice if you could, like, shoot the scout launcher to, like... ...move these out of the way so I can get through. I really also do like that the scout, uh, is its own, like, mobile source of, of light as well. I do really like that. It's a very handy little thing. It's an island shard. Uh, cave shard, we've already discovered that. Cool. We know where Chert is. Okay. So we'll go back this way. Back towards... Safety. Oh shit. Well, I fucked up. I didn't mean to activate my fucking jetpack like that. Let's see if we can find our way from here. Nice. Perfect. There's that that was a that was a better shortcut actually. There you go. Not all hope is lost if you accidentally jetpack into a sand fall. Now we go up here. We're gonna check the bottom immediately. What's good is if we're, you know, fast with it, like we have been. Uh, the sand doesn't the sand doesn't start draining immediately. This, this chamber doesn't start filling up straight away. So we're doing good for time. be light. Satisfying noises. Okay, let's have a look here. All right, we're going all the way down to the bottom first. Oh, and I almost impaled myself. A high energy lab. All right, we're doing high energy lab first. Just got very quiet. Is that fill? It is filling up. Okay, it's filling up very fucking quickly too. Ah, man. Okay. Okay, 
maybe I'll just wait until the sand rises past the fucking cacti a little bit. And I can just go through. I'm just trying to do it as fast as possible because we're on a time limit here and it's also, we're in a fucking danger. What the fuck? Oh no, okay, good. Okay. Oh my god, okay. The claustrophobia is fucking terrifying. Like, people who go into caves for fun, they're like, so I can't actually move right now. Interesting, okay, so it starts off down the bottom really deep, but then it takes us up here. Interesting. Is that is that gonna hurt? Does this hurt the alien? We've bought ourselves some time by zooming up here, which is nice. Oh, and there's something else. Is that gonna take us to the surface? Who knows? Alright, we're going this way then. I'm dangerously close to being out of fuel. Actually, this goes down. This one goes. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, hang on. That goes down. What the fuck? Okay, so if you get. Oh, shit. Oh, no, that's fine. It's just. I thought it was filling up. <laughs> it's just the orbit. Okay. Interesting. So we can't go up there through the ghost matter thing. Yeah. Oh, it just catches me. All right. We in here. Okay. We in here. <gasps> Warp cores. Yo, and there's a white hole and a black hole warp core. Oh fuck, okay, hang on. We're gonna activate some sort of teleporting shit, okay. Records show Namai arriving at the warp receiver on Brittle Hollow very slightly before departing from the White Hole Station. Raimi and I are devising an experiment to test if this is a real phenomenon or a simple machine error. In theory, we want to try to reproduce what we want to try and reproduce is a negative amount of time elapsing between something entering the black hole and exiting the white hole at its destination. Initial things first, our experiment setup will first pair a small black hole core with a small white hole core to mimic the setup on the white hole station. Hypothesis, it is possible for an object to exit a white hole before entering the corresponding black hole. So like when we get sucked into the black hole at Brittle Hollow and appear at White Hole, we are for like a split second in two places at once. Because we've there's a text that we've read, uh, which I sort of mentally took note of, but I didn't verbally acknowledge it. It has like departure time, arrival time, and it's like one digit difference, but it's earlier, the arrival time. Got a scroll. Scroll, please. Put it in. An update. Our experiment here reproduced the anomaly in arrival and departure times, but Pi is unconvinced it's more than an equipment error. I hope to strengthen the effect to render it visible to the to the unaided eyes, like almost have like some sort of massive delay. To that end, we've decided to try adding more energy. I imagine the Sunless's city's energy supply should prove sufficient. Of note, Raimi, Yarrow requests that we let him know before we reroute energy to the experiment. I'd hate to leave him in the dark. Oh, okay. So that thing, that platform with the four pillars, you are choosing where to direct energy to. 
That's why he's saying, I hate to leave him in the dark. You have to take power away from other places to put power elsewhere. You can have power everywhere at once, but I guess maybe if you only have it in one spot, you can have more energy. All available energy has been rerouted from the city to our experiment. Raimi and I are about to run a new test. So you'd want to direct all the energy to the, is, is this, this is the high energy lab? Hypothesis confirmed. Hypothesis confirmed. I saw it. Pi saw it. Hypothesis confirmed. This is beyond extraordinary. This changes everything. What a beautiful day for the intersection of abstract theory and practical application. All right. They confirmed being in two places at once. This little experiment. Oh God, we got more scrolls too. We are learning, baby. Okay. That is the sun. And the, the tower on one of the Ash Twins, that is also the Ash Twins and another tower. That is something. Fuck, are these all different parts of... No, I think these are all different parts of this, of this, this location. Different perspectives, maybe? This is bizarre. The Southern Observatory is asking if creating a 22 minute interval is possible. Ooh, I've never counted how long our time loop is before. I think while I was recording, looking at my recording timer, it see it's seemingly around like a 30 minute mark, I think. Approximately. Um, I, the, the time loop was like five, ten minutes ago, I think. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, 22 minute interval is possible. We'll have something arrive 22 minutes before it is actually sent through the warp. We've learned the negative interval of time between departure and arrival can be increased by adding more energy to the warp core. Problematically, the energy required to extend the interval increases at an exponential rate. Creating a 22 minute long interval is possible, but we are currently unable to generate the necessary energy. Or is the time loop 22 minutes? And I'm just, I have no understanding of the concept of time. Raimi and I believe it would be necessary to invent a new method of producing energy, a thrilling but enormous undertaking. We would also require advanced warp technology able to handle such energy. Man. I can't believe I haven't even thought of timing the time loop yet. It's taken me until I have saw that to be like, hold on a second. Uh, when I next die, when the time loop goes, I'm going to time it and we're going to find out. I'm going to find out how much, I'm going to find out how long we get each time, which is actually really nice because then I can constantly just have like a stopwatch <laughs> going uh, next to me and I can find out how much time I have. Uh, Raimi and I believe it would be necessary to invent a new method of producing energy, a thrilling but enormous undertaking. We would also require advanced warp technology able to handle such energy. This is either going to be the Sun Station or the Ash Twin project itself. We would also likely need an enormous space to fit these proposed new energy and warp technologies together. The only location large enough would be Ash Twin. Okay, so I believe we're starting to see something happening here. Uh, my initial thoughts is they're trying, due to the Namai's experimentation, something is happening where there's like a massive amount of energy that's needed uh, and we are experiencing some sort of warping thing or inadvertently the time loop has been created because of it. Oh man, it's it's wrinkling my brain, that's for sure. Because we know that when we are dying, when the time loop resets, we're going through one of the Namai masks that look like they're the ones that are in that Ash Twin project room, like we're going through it. Hmm. Let's put a pin in that. The energy is currently unavailable, you say. You're a gas pie. My pun was unintended, Raimi, so I believe it's you who's aeriform. <laughs> okay, let's take that out. Put this one in. The 
The Ash Twin Project will be one of our biggest undertaking, uh, undertakings, metaphorically and physically. To build it, we need a way to travel quickly between Ash Twin and each location that holds crucial project material. So this is when they started doing the, the warping between planets. What if we used warp towers like the one we have on the White Hole Station to connect Ash Twin directly to each critical location? Of note, each tower on Ash Twin will warp to a different planet. Okay, so all... Oh. Okay. Poke, Root and I can begin work on this immediately in the Black Hole Forge. This will keep us busy, so they go to Brittle Hollow. Okay, so... Did they start here? And then... Oh my god. My gratitude to those who noted my imprecise language. Yes, the sun is not a planet. I believe this has been sufficiently clarified. Kindly stop reminding me. We can design each tower to visually reflect its warp destination. Okay. The giant's deep tower, for instance, could resemble a cyclone. We could model the timber hearth tower after a geyser mountain. Ah, okay. These are the warp towers. Giant's deep. Timber hearth? Ash Twin, the Sun, maybe the Sun Station, Brittle Hollow. Giant's Bramble does not get one, because, I mean, yeah, logically you wouldn't really be going there. Okay. Oh, this is a, this is a big one. This is a, this is definitely a big one. In terms of what we're fucking discovering here, this is a big one. Note, this door will need to remain closed for some time. Pi and I are running an experiment based on the extraordinary findings from the Whitehall station. An update, the High Energy Lab is now being used to design the Ash Twin Project. If you're here to help, or even just to observe, be sure to use the Sunless City path to the lab. Raimi and I will be running this experiment until one of us, specifically me, can prove the other wrong. So although it's inconvenient, the lab currently can only be accessed by the path from the Sunless City. Inviting sand inside would disrupt our setup and could have enormous consequences. We realize this is an intriguing prospect, but the door must remain closed nonetheless. High Energy Lab. Alright, we that is, this is the High Energy Lab. Okay. We've, oh, I've been here, I believe. I land, this is one of the first places we landed to check this out, and I had a look down here, and we just completely missed that door that I guess you couldn't open. Um, because it's open from the inside. Ah, uh, there's a projection stone. There is a projection stone there. Dangerously low on fuel. Sunless city. High interloper. So this is a warp location. So we went into a tower and we warped two giants deep, obviously unknowingly, before we just read about what it is. Um, I'm going to quickly go back to my ship so we can refuel, and then I'll trace my steps back. That's a really cool thing that I like about the map as well, is obviously it recounts exactly um, where you've been. And this is the worst time to run out of fuel because I can't launch myself. Fuck, I can't launch myself up there. Uh, which means I have to walk to this bridge. Oh, this is bad. I have to walk to there, <laughs> to walk over there, to walk around there. I think. Which is going to confuse the path that I've walked on my mini map by a lot. Uh, if you want to know what I'm talking about with the mini-map, it's behind my head, unfortunately. It's uh, this bad boy. Behind my head. There's so many HUD elements that 
I'm gonna cover up something. I cover up the the gravity thing and the the, the planet. Alright, where was this bridge? Okay, there it is. Head back on over, which is actually kind of where we wanted to be anyway. I'm now going to... This is definitely a dangerous position you can find yourself in when you run out of fuel and then you also need oxygen. So we'll go in here to get more oxygen. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my ship for fuel and then we will do the Sunless City. Actually, I think I want to go up here first. And this will be the journey that we take to go back to the ship. Yeah, we can use this time to think about what the fuck is going on. <laughs> um, I really do love the fact that this game gives you such a... just a, a free reign to to pick a direction, go go in it and and learn things. And it's such a such a wonderful such a wonderful feeling. Um especially for a curious mind where you obviously have this uh event, this mystery that's presented to you and it doesn't hold your hand and it doesn't like make you go to a particular spot, you know, it doesn't doesn't do that, you know. Oh, when you go to your ship, it resets the... Okay, fuck. When you go to your ship, it resets the path you've walked. Okay, which means I need to remember which direction I was actually going in in the first place, which I think is this way. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. Which way was I going? It was the other way. Watch. Really pay better attention to this. There, this way. I love being able to orbit the planet like this. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Alright, there we go. Took us a bit of fuel to get here. There we go. Alright. Um, yeah, I love the fact that it's just like this mystery to solve that it doesn't hold it doesn't hold your hand and it's not like go here and there's not like a million quest markers everywhere. The quest you can put, make your own quest markers. You make notes of your own ship log and you go, cool, we know this. We've gathered this information. Let's go look at this. And then you'll find out more. And then you can go, oh, wow. If I go back to this area, I can use this applied knowledge to this thing. Um, and I just think it's really nice uh, games that that do that. And I think more games need to learn from it. And I'll actually briefly make a, not a comparison, but also another mention to, I really liked Elden Ring's approach to an open world in that regard that there are markers in that game. Yes, most of them are markers that you can actually put there yourself uh, outside of like points of grace and they added NPC markers and stuff, which I think is good. Like this game has ways to find your NPCs and stuff as well. Uh, but I really like the fact that it's not like here's your quest log and all of your question mark icons and side quests that are, you know, all... To, in a to-do list that's overwhelming. It's just like, I don't look at the ship log and feel overwhelmed. It's exciting to piece these things together and to uh, consistently, you know, turn those question marks into pictures and get more information instead of looking at it and being like, oh, this this is too much to do. Like some games make you feel like co uh, either collect-a-thons or too many side quests or it's just watered down with uh, so much shit. Um but I really like a game that isn't afraid to just let you go, <laughs> you know, to just let you go and it, and it trusts you to, to do the damn thing. Um, and I, I love that a lot. Now, considering this staircase is now going to nothing but sand, I, part of me wants to believe that I think the Sunless City is where we've already been? when we've gone down to the bottom. And I think obviously we've worked our way up to the high energy lab, I think. I believe so anyway, but we've learned a lot in here, which is nice about the warp towers. Um, and we can go to each warp tower to go to all of the different planets to save a lot of time instead of, um,
flying there with the ship. So I believe you can go back and forth. I think. Maybe. The white hole is the receiver and the black hole is the is the sender. What we should do while we are here. Oh, actually, hang on. This also is something. Ah, oh, and this room is filling up, so I'm not able to do this experiment here right now. But we have diverted power away from there and put it here. Oh, this must be what they're talking about with, like, the power thing. So maybe those four pillars down in the city are just literally turning the lights on. But this is the, like, because it's like a, almost like a giant solar fucking panel. And it's pulling the power from the sun. This is powering the sunless city down that way. And then if we put it this way, it powers the little experimentation room, I think. Um, and again, due to the fucking nature of <laughs> being stuck in a time loop, we have... Uh, lost our opportunity to do that until next time which means I'm just gonna go to my ship at this point in time I'm just gonna go to my ship because we're losing we're losing <laughs> the opportunity to explore this one but it opens up this one. And I think these are the... This is where the warp towers sit. So that's the warp tower for Timber Hearth. Which goes to the warp tower for Ash Twins. Where does it warp us to, though, however? That is that is the question. Uh, that's... Well, I guess this might take us to the sun station, right? Or to the sun itself. Let's... Oops. Uh, well, fuck, the sun station is gone, so if it was to take us to the sun station, we'd be dead. Uh, this is Giant Steep. This is the one that we went into by accident. And this is Brittle, Brittle Hollow. That's Brittle Hollow, that is. I, I think what's cool about this is now every time on each planet when we've seen, because we know what it is, it, that's the receiver, because we have teleported there to that location twice now, I think. We've used it twice. Both has taken us by surprise every time. Um, we know that we can use it, but that is a one-way trip. You can't just walk right back into it. Let's go into this one, because I want to see where this teleports us. Ah, oh, it'll just teleport us right there, won't it? I was wondering if it would teleport us, like, inside the city. But yeah, it's going to teleport us on the surface. Duh. Obviously. Alright, I've already answered that question for myself. That's good. How do we get in? How do we get in the core? Because this is obviously... This is powering... This thing here is powering it. And there's another one on the other side, right? Because it needs a tremendous amount of power. So they're both powering the inside. The, the sand being drained from this planet is not part of the project because they've pointed out that when they arrived here it was already happening. If we go in there, it just takes us up to the top. Gotta be a way in, but I don't know how. And I figure, I feel like it's it's completely sealed, right? I think that's something that they mentioned is that it's completely sealed. So that, but they mentioned that if there was like any sort of hole or leak or fissure or whatever, it would be a disaster for the for the project. So there's part of me that feels like in here somewhere there would potentially be. Uh, the tiniest of openings, maybe? And that could be what's causing something to go dramatically wrong. Is there could be a, a way for a, a little little astronaut to slip inside the Ash Twin project if it's potentially had its seal broken by something. Um, but alas, we will not be discovering it right now because we are going to be 
dying. But again, we are hitting another time loop and we're at about, so we're, we're at like an hour. So I think it is kind of safe to assume that it might be 22 minutes because I also have to take into account the fact that when we read things, when we're translating things and reading stuff, uh, the time actually pauses. So that obviously extends my my timer. Uh, so when we die and when this loop starts, we are going to press. Uh, we're going we're going to press. Um, on the timer. Feet first into hell. Yeah. Driving right into you. I face my death head on. Oh, okay. It might be that 22 minute interval. Because, yeah, I need to take into consideration when time pauses. I'm about to press start on a stopwatch. And then I need to pause the stopwatch. Actually, what, what we'll do for the sake of this time loop, for this experiment, I will turn off the game's auto-pausing. All right. So, all right. There's the quantum moon above Giant Steep. That's beautiful. So we'll instantly pause and then freeze time while reading ship log and translating text. We're gonna turn that off for this time loop and press resume. All right, the stopwatch is on. I don't think that there's any circumstance where time should pause now. So whatever we're doing, it won't always happen. We can find out if it's the 22 minutes that was mentioned on that text. Um, I think as well, something that's quite interesting about this, the, the time loop and all of that kind of stuff is, um, just because of the fact that the in between like the planet starts filling up with sand so quickly is if you want to get anything done in a time loop on this planet you have to be there immediately <laughs> you know you have to fucking get to it um now something i'm really curious about naturally is the fact that there is a warp tower there is a warp tower for the sun uh, it makes me want to do that as soon as possible. I, I don't know if that is going to be taking us to the sun station because I don't know when exactly I don't know when exactly the sun station gets absorbed into the sun. I see on the north and south pole there are two openings. They're both exits. Okay, they're both upward things. That's quite interesting. Because I'm wondering how long it takes for the towers... Because they do poke out quite a bit. I'm wondering how long it takes for the towers to be open. Yeah. I'm trying to land on the structure because landing on the sand is probably not the safest option considering it just drains constantly. So this is what the landing camera is for, isn't it? See where I'm landing. Now, we can't go in because it's down. So there's, there's part of me that's just like, do I just wait this out, you know? Because you can start seeing stuff appearing. I feel like it's possible to... Look, there's a quantum moon again. I feel like it's possible to land on that sun station, but I feel like there will be a lot of death and a lot of being very Icarus-like in nature to get there. And I'm not wanting to do anything in this time loop that jeopardizes my life because we are timing ourselves to see the loop. We could fucking... I reckon you could launch a fucking scout. <laughs> Go, scout! Go to the sun station! You can do it, I believe in you. Launch a scout into the sun for all I care. Boom! And then see it just 
of die. Oh. <laughs> and it just orbits the sun. Alright. So this is gonna start pulling up the the things that are powering the Ash Twin project. This gives us a nice moment for um a nice moment for some reflection. And I, I like I like because the game is whatever you learn and you discover, and I, I like voicing my uh, hypotheses and my theories. What the fuck is going on? Uh, and this is like kind of the perfect game for it. We get such a good view of where the <laughs> where the quantum moon appears here. So that's another thing to to think about as well and to be aware of is obviously the um, the quantum moon has a whole shrine thing that will go to the secret sixth location. There's the quantum moon again. <laughs> so if we just go to and land on the quantum moon and wait until that shrine appears, uh, if we time it correctly, um, if we time it correctly, we could end up at the eye of the universe, if that is the secret sixth uh, final location. It's just really hard to land on that sun station, because obviously to match the velocity of it, um, you'd need to lock onto it. We're not able to lock onto it, unfortunately. Okay, let's see if there's any towers up yet. I think we're only starting to see these show up. There we go. Sun Tower. Okay. Sun Tower comes up first. It's the tallest one. Okay. And then we're seeing the Ash Twin one come up. Alright. Um, I can roll. And you remember how to roll so I can orient myself. Let's land on here. Perfect. Okay. So we're doing this now. Maybe we could go and check. Fuck off. Okay. Um, what does that mean? Look, we can get in there. Okay. There's the warp thing. Of course the door is broken on the outside. So there's a lift to get in there. Oh, you suck. Okay. Of course it's uh, not going to be that easy. As soon as the tower was up, I was like, yes. Okay, hang on. No! What the fuck? How do we get rid of this growth? Because it won't disappear. Oh, okay. Um, the only time we saw the cacti disappearing was around quantum shards. Like it was affecting its environment as well and also making those disappear in the same way that when we were in rooms, the trees would also move. So if there was potentially some way for us to have a quantum shard with it, could we could we add that to our inventory? Could we go and find like a little piece of a quantum shard and fucking strap it to ourselves so that we could affect things in our environment like the cacti and then it, it would allow it to move or shift? Because there's rooms that have doorways blocked by the cacti as well. Oh, man. So if I want to get into this sun tower... Oh, did I just pause? I just paused the game, didn't I? All right. <sighs> Fuck. I need to not pause because I'm recording the time loop. Obviously, we could probably pause for a little bit of time because it's not going to throw it off by, like, a huge margin. Um, <laughs> It's not going to throw it off by a huge margin. So if it's still around that 22-minute mark, we know that it's because I paused a little bit. Some time has passed since I checked in with you, Pi. How are you and Idea progressing with the Sun Station plans? Presently, my assessment is that our plan will either fail explosively or succeed explosively. Pi, you know I don't know. You know I don't find that funny. How curious. Raimi thinks I'm a gas, and I don't recall requesting that you monitor this conversation, Idea. 
I don't see what state of matter you are has to do with this, and I don't recall supporting the sun station construction, but here we are. Oh, I love that they're saying you don't have to monitor this conversation. So it seems like some of this text and communication could not be only relegated to this spot, but if this writing goes on the wall, it's potentially a way for them to communicate long distances as well. Because we, I think we've read a conversation that was exactly the same in two different locations, and that might be a proof of that. Hypothesis. Time spent away from the station would be beneficial to you both. I'm immensely interested in testing your hypothesis, Yarrow. That at least we can agree on. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the fucking entrance into the thing. How do we get in? Without puncturing our suit, because we, we can puncture our suit and repair it, but it bounces us back. Like, do I just have to... This is not good, you know what I mean? Do I just have to... Is this what we have to do? Oh, is this what... Oh, no. No! I've killed myself, and now I don't know... Okay, I have to start my stopwatch again. I'm doing... I was supposed to not be doing stuff to endanger my my health. Okay. Do I have to slowly get myself through a maze of cacti to get around into the other room then? And risk suit punctures? Hmm. But also I can't do that while I'm... I'm looping. Alright. I might have to time the time loop. On the next loop. Purely because... I think I might have to risk death going through that cacti area. So... I think if you take it slow, like if you just land, get it punctured, repair it, land, get it punctured, repair it, like you could do it that way, slowly get through there. Or just have absolutely insanely good balancing skills. We can see that the warp receiver, we can see the warp receiver on the sun station. So, you could be a fucking madman and try and land on it, which would result in your death by getting sucked into the sun, or you can try and navigate through a cacti death maze to go up into the tower. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to let time pass once again. And we're just going to sit in the ship and watch the sun station orbit said sun. Um, and we will wait for our opportunity to once again go into the sun tower. Oh, well, I guess we'll just land the ship here. Because we, <laughs> we, we might just die anyway. Uh, it, it just leads to a potential problem that we're going to lose our ship at some point, but... Okay. Um, to a good start. Jesus. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, no! Ah, oh, yes, right. I realized that we have a limited amount of... Um, fuel each time. Oh, okay. Ow. Okay. Oh, yes. It is doing quite a bit of damage to us as well. Oh, okay. We did it. Holy fuck. All right. It's actually possible. It is possible. We made it, we made it in relatively unscathed. Now we can open the door 
the door to darkness has been opened. Okay, so that's the way out. Fucking take me to the sun station. And... Oh. It has to, like, line up with it, right? There goes my ship. <laughs> there goes my fucking ship. <laughs> I just have to stand here until it, like, aligns, right? Is that correct? It will line up and then I will get teleported. There's, there it is, look. There's the sun station. Whee! It works. Okay, wait until it was lined up, baby. We are on the sun station. Okay, I'm somewhere different than where I expected. I'm also almost dead if I look at my lovely vitals, but we made it to the sun station. That's what's important. I'm not dead. I'm still timing the time loop. I have three minutes of oxygen remaining. Okay. 281,042 uh, 281, years ago, no user commands received for 10 minutes. All systems entering sleep. 281,042 years ago. Eight minutes, 38 seconds ago. Oh, oh, that's the start of the time loop. I'm, I can look at my timer. Eight minutes and 38 seconds ago, increased solar activity detected. Sun station hull integrity approaching critical levels, closing emergency doors. Eight minutes and 55. Oh, it updates in real time. It's fucking exciting. Oh no, I should have read that. Oh, it would have been emergency hatch. Okay. Oh fuck. Okay. It would have just said emergency hatch. Should have read that first. Oh, this is fucking cool. Okay. I'm on the sun station. And we are on limited time because we're about to get absorbed into the sun. So I need to start fucking reading and learning immediately. But the music's coming in and it's new music and it's cool. Mission. Science compels us to explode the sun. Can't we change this? I don't enjoy working in view of such a morbid mission statement. But it's accurate. We're going to create a supernova for the purpose of scientific progress. That's our mission. They're intentionally fucking causing it. Our mission is to decide if such an irresponsible feat is even possible. Here's a better one. Mission. Determine if it's possible to prompt the sun to explode so it's being forced ahead of time to go supernova. However, it's happening at multiple points in other systems. We can see it happening. You lack a sense of humor. At least I don't lack a sense of ethics. Kindly refrain from going supernova on me before the sun does, Idea. So they've decided to be like, oh, let's try and make this system go supernova. But... It was, you know, when they discovered that there was inhabitants and uh, life on Timber Hearth, they were like, oh, don't build a mining site there. Build it somewhere else so they might, you know, live. What changed for them to go, let's see if we can just fucking blow up this system, actually. Like, let's fuck around and find out. What a fucking view, though. I'm just quickly running around here to see if we've got scrolls to pick up or anything. I don't know how long I've got left in this place, and we're probably going to die, because I don't know how else to get out of here. I don't know how we can return. Oh, no, hang on. Am, am I an idiot? If I just stand on the receiver when it lines up again, will I be returned? Will I sent, be sent back? That might be how that works, actually. Oh, I'm dead. Yep, I think we're going it. So I'm going it. We're going into the sun. Wow, we're going into the sun. Mm. Okay, we made it to 11 minutes and 45 seconds. So you you get like almost 12 minutes before the sun station gets too close to the sun, and we die as a result of heat death. They're intentionally trying to blow up the sun. Yeah. 
and by golly gosh, they did it, but also did they really? Because this looks like it started 280,000 years ago. Something happened. And everything went sleep mode, and then at the beginning of the time loop, everything wakes up again. If you could land on this, you would save yourself so much time. We can't lock onto it. We can only align ourselves with the sun itself. It makes me wonder if there was a way, if you were able to exit the ship in orbit and then try and catch one of those gravity platforms on the sun station. That's just... It's just not going to work out, is it? <laughs> you know, and, it, and then it's just like, can you fucking crash into it? No. <laughs> uh, it's just not going to not going to work out that with that discovery of getting onto the sun station and reading some of what we could do there. I don't know if that's all of what we could do, but some of it. Uh, I guess we can check the, sh the ship log and, and see if there's more to explore there. Let's go and take a look. Uh, that's some pretty crucial info from the Namai there. Maybe I can go, go back and talk to some other characters again and be like, hello. Alright, sun station. There is more to explore here. It was designed to make the sun go supernova. So the sun station goes into the sun. Everything blows up. So the Ash Twin Project is different, separate. But it's what's keeping us alive. And the, the fact that there's still more to discover here too. There's still so many question marks. But we have found a pretty critical thing. The Ash Twin Project is one of our biggest rumors. We've got the Quantum Moon, Ash Twin Project, Orbital Probe Cannon, the Vessel, and the subsurface energy readings are like the biggest rumors. They're the main things, and everything is like a sub-rumor from there. Hmm. Far out. I am pretty, pretty blown away with that information. I am pretty blown away with that information. We didn't get to successfully time the loop yet. Because we died at like a 12 minute mark. But if the sun station goes into the sun, I wonder how much time we get after that. But that th I guess that kind of throws our 22 minute thing out of the window. They were just trying to formulate a 22 minute delay in traveling to the point where there could be two of the same person in uh, the same place. Uh, in two, sorry, in two different places. Oh man, there's just so much to think about right now. And it's really kind of like, it's almost just overwhelming in a sense. You know, it's almost overwhelming in a sense. So, I'm going to try and land on the quantum moon again. I'm going to try and land on the quantum moon again. So, we make it appear. I'm going to land on this thing. And we're going to see about this quantum shrine. So, the quantum moon doesn't seem to be be all end all. I, I'm, I'm trying to. It, it seems that there are two. I don't want to say main quests, but they're like two things to be able to do. Two main things, which is figure out the secret to the eye of the universe, which is what the Namai were trying to do and figure out, or prevent the sun station from, um, pre prevent the sun station from going, getting sucked into the sun stop the the experiment so the sun does not go supernova but also figure out why 
uh, other systems are, um, figure out why other systems are also exploding. Uh, also, it's a probably a good thing that the quantum moon apparently has a breathable atmosphere because, <laughs> um, I just left the ship with my suit. Okay, so Solanum's ship is here. Uh, we didn't land on the, uh, by the body of Solanum this time, which is really interesting. I thought that happened every time. Like, you always landed near... Uh, the body of... Solanum. There he is. And his body moves as well, with the power of the quantum stuff. Or does it? Yes, it does. It's, it, it still does. Now this is the... Is this the south or the north? I'm pretty sure this is the... South? And this is the North Pole. So when this shrine is on the South Pole... This is our sixth and final secret location. gonna keep turning around and spinning around and still until there's a shrine here if that is even possible at this point in time. Sometimes it's Solanum. This isn't directly on the, on the South Pole is it? It has to be, I'd say it would have to be on the, the very point. Keeps appearing there. Maybe that is the point on the South Pole that it appears at. I'm gonna keep spinning around until it might appear there. It's so wild to see the landscape change. Hmm, yeah. okay. And every time we does it it's not changing the... It's still on Brittle Hollow. You know, next time we go in, will it also be on Brittle Hollow again? Hmm. Does this lock it into... Does this lock it into place, the planet, by powering it up like that? Does it lock it to a planet? Is it on a different planet now? No. Fuck. Okay. How do we get it to... Because when we've landed on it, right? When we landed on it, we it was orbiting Brit uh, Ash Twins. The first time we landed on it uh, was on the Quantum Moon and it was there. So is the quantum moon now forever bound to be where we land on it? Unless we stop looking at the orbit. Like if we stop looking... Can it move now? Can it... can it change? Yes, holy fuck. So, because we are technically still viewing it from the inside... Oh, that's fucking amazing. Okay, because we're still technically viewing it from the inside, it doesn't move. But if we turn the fucking lights off... It goes... it moves. Holy shit. Okay, so now if, if we... if we just do this... It'll... it'll... It'll cycle. Okay. The floor changes as well, I think. 
Oh, fuck. Okay, so if we do this, we'll do it again. I'm terrified. I'm terrified to open this door. Ha. Huh. take selfies. As me. <laughs> as, as my guy. <laughs> um, hmm. We're here, but we can't get out. done that one. We've recalled the rule of the sixth location. We've done that one. We haven't recalled the rule of quantum entanglement yet. The one with the shard. Which means there's another piece to this. There's another rule. Quantum entanglement. Which I think might be... I don't know. Door is fuck the door is blocked. That's the important thing to note here. And if I look away, I'm trying to see if we can get the fucking I don't know how we can get that to move or disappear. If we turn off the light, we're going to go elsewhere. We're going to go somewhere else. Unless maybe if the doors open, it might not change location. There's still more of a light source when if uh, if we close if we close the door we will definitely shift back to Brittle Hollow. <sighs> hmm. I can't get the quantum shit to move out of the way. This is killing me. The fact that it's 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 there, but it is quantum moonified. All right, I have a uh, another idea. Oh, it went, oh, oh, okay, I see. Haha, <laughs> we can, we can quickly shift it now. I see, so it's actually random, it's not, it's not set to go there exactly. Doors opening. It's not possible. So the moon, uh, the moon. Oh, right. So this might be another thing. Okay, this might be the other part. Is the fact that the shrine isn't exactly on the south pole, and maybe because the tower is in the same place that it is on that planet, and it's being obstructed by some quantum crystal. But if the tower is in a different spot like the South Pole, the door will be open correctly, like properly. And that's how we can actually get out. 
We need the shrine to be here, right? Like, this is the South Pole. Like, I'm not crazy, am I? And this, and this is the North Pole. Cool to see how the planet, uh, the moon changes depending on what it's orbiting. So there's a giant tornado on the North Pole when it's on around giant steam. Is my ship here? Or does my ship dis does my ship disappear? Because I can't refuel my suit without my ship. I'm pretty sure that when we sh when the the moon shifts, our our ship is lost. So we're unable to pinpoint the location. Which means our our fuel is very limited. Is it possible to get this... To get this shrine to... end up on the South Pole if it's maybe orbiting a particular planet? Like, it's not able to do it... It's maybe orbiting, like, a specific spot. So if we open this door now, it'll be blocked. not on the South Pole. So this shrine is now, because we can see it on the mini-map, it's now permanently on this section of the map. This is a brittle hollows quantum. South Pole's kind of fucked because it's up high. It might be a, uh, a specific planet that has a better South Pole. Maybe. It might be a, a specific one that it can orbit. Where it appears at the South Pole. So this is Dark Bramble's version. Never been on Dark Bramble's Quantum Moon before. Makes me wonder if there's uh, a vine in here that's larger on the inside too. Again, I'm doing the thing where if I keep spinning and having a look at the South Pole, it might appear. But the more that we do this, the more that I'm sort of thinking it's either really fucking rare and hard for it to appear on the South Pole, or it will only do it if I maybe discover or do something else in the game, like the third quantum tower. That might be have to that might have to be what it is. Cause it at the moment it just keeps appearing just skirting the edge of it. <sighs> this was gonna be uh, I was doing this now, because I was like, hopefully this could be something I discover, like, right before the end of the episode, is maybe we can figure it out, but, um, it's not seeming likely, but we have actually figured out how to get the quantum moon to orbit the sixth and final location that is potentially, um, the eye of the universe based on the, on the symbol. 
Who fucking knows? Um, it is a it is going to be a mystery to us all. That's for sure. Um, yeah, getting it getting it to appear by the South Pole is um, it's tough. So when you're on the moon and you move to a different location, I think your ship disappears. Where's, where's our ship? It's just gone. It's not on the map. You can't see it anyway. <laughs> like, the ship is just gone. So it doesn't stay on the quantum moon, uh, unfortunately. It does not stay. But with that one, we are going to bring this episode of The Outer Wilds to a close. Because that's about as much as I can discover without my ship right now. <laughs> it is ship error is what pops up there. Ship error. It doesn't pop up on here when you zoom out, but it just says ship error over that way, which is really interesting, very bizarre. But we're going to bring this episode of Outer Wilds to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today for some lovely discoveries on Ash Twin and then again trying to probe the quantum moon to, to figure it out. But we know that it has to be on the South Pole. Uh, and then I guess if the tower is correctly on the South Pole, we change it to there, we should be able to walk out instead of it being blocked by the quantum crystal, like crystal stuff. And then we can, we can see, but we might have to, we might have to do something, you know, first. I think that's, there you go, you can see that explosion that happens as the interloper goes into the sun. Yeah. All right. We will figure it out. We'll figure it out next time. My my brain is processing a lot of information right now. And we'll, we're going to have to explore more next time. I think next time we will go to the next quantum tower and learn about that with the one with the crystal shard in there. And then we'll see what happens. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Outer Wilds. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you're looking forward to the next episode because I certainly am. I'll see you then. Thank you.